Hi, I'm Rich from RWC, and today I'm going to show you how to install a thermostat mixing valve. Now this job is actually for a disabled toilet, so it's important that I install only a TMB3 approved thermostat and mixing valve. As you can see, it's a retrofit project, the pipe work's already there. I've already done a temperature check on the tap, and on the hot tap itself, it actually runs about 60 degrees, which is far too high for the user. As you can see, there is currently no thermostat and mixing valve installed. So let's get that sorted. The tools and materials you'll require for this job are as follows. Adjustable spanners, both a Phillips and a flathead screwdriver, a detector, water pump grips, an electric screwdriver with a diamond tip drill bit, pipe and pipe cutter. Now for this job specifically, I require a couple of 15 mm elbows, but they may not be necessary for your install. Masking tape, a tape measure, a pen, two pipe clips, and six mil screws and roll plugs. Now due to the nature of the application being TMB3, I've opted for the Aussie Mix TMB2 stroke TMB3 thermostat mixing valve. This is the sharp white version with push fit connections. I've also opted for the potable adapter that allows me to run my cold pipe directly from the cold adapter on the valve up to my cold tap. Just because of the fact that it's a sharp bite valve, I've also got my 15mm disconnect tongs. And then finally I've got a tub for when I drain down. So let's have a look at the valve we're installing today. I've opted for the Aussie Mix 4-in-1 with sharp bite connections by Reliance Valves. It features isolation on both inlets, test ports, check valves as you can see, and inbuilt strainers. Now it's really important that these are connected the right way around. As you can see, the water pathways through the valve differ. So to just make sure that you are installing it the correct way around, there's some handy indicators on the body. This valve also features the ability to install a potable adapter. I'll be installing this on the cold supply and it's gonna allow me to run the cold pipe directly up to the tap without having to deviate around the valve in order to make the connection. Now, one consideration which is really important, this valve works at a 10 to one pressure ratio, which means that its application is actually pretty wide. In real life, that means five bar one side, half a bar another, and the valve will still function correctly. Ideally, for the valve to work at its optimum level, we would recommend trying to balance those pressures as close as possible. And in order to do that, we would recommend installing a pressure reducing valve, like this one with speed fit connections by Reliance Valves, to enable that pressure to be dropped so that it just balances it. Let's get this fitted. So the next thing to do is just prepare your valve ready for install. So you need to install the half inch fiber washers on both unions. That's just to make sure obviously there's no leaking around these unions, but it makes it that bit easier as well. When I remove the unions here, I can take the body out should I need to do any maintenance or servicing on it. Um, but for now, nice and tight and with the washers in situ. I've also fitted the total adapter that allows me to run the cold directly up to the tap, as well as for the blended mix that's gonna be going up to the hot side of our tap. Now you'll see I've removed the cap here that makes it a little bit easier for me to adjust the temperature once it's installed and because I'm retrofitting this I just need to know the pipe centers which I can see is around just over 120 mil on this one okay let's get it installed and there we have it fully installed Reliance valves Aussie Mix TMB2 stroke TMB3 now to comply to TMB3 the valve must be installed within two meters of the outlet. As you can see, I've got it as close as possible here and I've given myself good access for when I need to test it or if there's any maintenance that's required on it. Now, as you can see, I've had to use the six mil diamond drill bit with my drill, a six mil raw plug and a six mil screw with a clip just to support that outlet. But when I come to isolating it, when I'm testing it or if I need to do any work on it, I'll be able to unclip that and then easily isolate both the hot and the cold. So now, all we need to do is test it. So the first thing to do is to adjust the temperature. Now to turn this temperature up, you just need to rotate the headwork clockwise. And that will increase the temperature. Now, I'm using a stick thermometer here. As you can see, just to measure the temperature. If I flip around, you should hopefully see it was close to 41 as we can. 
Now 41 is the set temperature for a hand basin um, to comply with TMB3, but recommended temperatures are in the instructions that come with the valve. There is a tolerance of plus or minus two degrees, so we're really close there. I'm happy with that. Let's go on to the next test. The final part of testing is to check the failsafe feature. Now this is done by isolating the hot or the cold and ensuring that no water passes through the tap. Now there is a limit of 120 millilitres in a minute to comply with TMP3, but I really hope on this one that it shuts down almost instantly. So let's try it. So I'm gonna open up the tap on the hot side, which is our blended side, and I'm gonna slowly isolate the hot. Hopefully this should shut down first time. Superb. Next, I'm gonna recommission the hot. I'm gonna go on the cold side. Now again, this should shut down, hopefully instantly, but we are allowed 120 milliliters in a minute. Let's give it a go. Perfect. So that's a pass. So I'm gonna recommission both suppliers now. So safe working tap. Turn off. And finally, I've just replaced the temperature cap to make it tamper proof. I'll see you at the next one.